Hey everybody, it's Paul here from Grain of Glass and today we are taking a look at the newest Brewzilla version 3.1.1, formerly known as the RoboBrew. Uh, we just got these in so I'm anxious to open up the box and see what the new version has in store. Alright, so first we can see we have the lid for the unit. This guy right here does not have the handles attached yet. We'll have to do that. There's the uh, recirculation arm. There should be some tubing that's going to go on here. The ball valve that goes on the bottom of the unit we'll have to install. I personally have never used this, but if for some reason your pump clogs or fails, you'll be able to get your beer out with this thing. Uh, these are the screws for the false bottom. In this baggie we have the handles for the lid, the overflow inlet, and the grain blocker. So this is what you put on the malt pipe when you're pouring in your grain so it doesn't just fall down the pipe and into the bottom of your RoboBrew. And also the grain basket handle. This is what goes into the basket that you lift up with when you're ready to sparge. Next we have the immersion chiller. Uh, the chiller does not include the tubing you need for the cold water in and hot water out so just be aware that you will need to buy some. The tubing for the recirculation arm is there. One eternity later. <laughs> the main part of the grain basket. All right, in here we have the pipe that goes in the grain basket. There's a little clip here that allows you to raise this. Then the ones that have these tabs uh, is the uh, top screen, so that'll go on top of your grains. Then we have the bottom two screens, same as the version 3.1, so we have a fine screen. And then we have the bottom screen that goes in the bottom of the grain basket. Uh, it has this screw here, so we will be able to screw on the, the pipe onto there. Uh, one thing I'll note is uh, myself, as well as many other users, if you use both of these screens, it tends to get clogged, so personally, I do not use this. Your results may vary, but I just, I, I find it's not useful. And finally, we have the false bottom. This guy right here, so this will go into the Brusilla before you put your grain basket in. These actually also fit in the grain father and can be purchased separately if you have a grain father and would like to use one of these. All right, now we have the main unit itself. So first look, it seems pretty much identical so far to the 3.1 in terms of the buttons and the way it's laid out, except it says Gen 3.1.1 here. This is the on off switch for the pump. And then these are the two uh, on-off switches for the element, one being 500 watt, one being 1000. So basically you'll use both when you're bringing it up to a boil or bringing it up to mash temperature. And then when you're mashing, you'll just use one of them. I typically just use the 500 one during that time. You have some handles here. So you got two on the top. And then uh, you have a third one here, which comes in handy when you're rinsing out the unit and you need to dump it out. It's really nice that it has that other handle here. Another thing to note is uh, the ventilation for the circuit board is on the bottom here. So I usually recommend putting this on a milk crate or something where you'll get a lot of circulation so that it doesn't overheat. Uh, this is the recirculation pipe. 
So it's a cam lock fitting and you have a little check valve on it there. So this is used to adjust the flow of water while you're mashing. You definitely don't want it on full bore. There's gonna to be too much water going in. So you can fine tune it uh, with this right here. You'll also notice that it's just a regular three prong plug. You don't need anything special or like a dryer plug or anything like that. So it's pretty handy. You can plug it in pretty much anywhere. So now let's put this all together. So first thing that I do is take the ball valve Make sure it's closed just so if you forget when you start adding in your water, it's not pouring all over the floor. There's a silicon uh, O-ring here. So I'll go on the outside, and then the lock nut goes on the inside. Tighten that up. And that's pretty much the only assembly required for the main unit. Next we have the malt pipe. So for that, We have the bottom screen that has the threads and we're gonna just attach this pipe here. If you want to use the fine mesh screen that I said I do not use, you'd put that on first and then screw this in. That goes just down to the bottom like so. Uh, unlike the first version that I used of this a couple years ago or the grandfather, there's no uh, O-rings or silicon that goes around these uh, mesh filters there. Next, we're going to put the handles on the lid. All you need for this is just a Phillips screwdriver. Put the screw through the hole and just thread on the handle. That's it. Now you can take this off without burning your hands. Now we'll just put this onto the false bottom. This is just like a little handle that helps you take it in and out for cleaning. So you have the part with the screw. Put that guy on there. Through the bottom. Then you have another one of those and then you have a nut. So basically, you have the screw, you have a washer on this side, a washer on this side, and then the uh, nut there. So that just lets you pull it in and out of the uh, main unit. Next, we'll put together the recirculation arm. This is pretty simple. You got your silicon tubing. Just push it onto the uh, barb here. And that's it for that. Now for the immersion chiller, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't include any tubing. So what you'll need is just some basic vinyl tubing, half inch by five eighths, that'll go on one side. This will be the cold water going in. You'll need a hose clamp on there. You'll also need a garden hose adapter with a barb and a hose clamp. So this you can hook up to a tap or to your garden hose or whatnot. And then for the outside, so you're pumping in cold water. That cold water, especially during the first few minutes, is gonna come out very hot. You could use the same vinyl tubing, but I recommend high temperature silicone tubing. And all you'll need is again, half inch by five eighths, put it on the other side with a hose clamp, and away you go, that's all you need there. So let's say it's brew day, you're about to add your grains into the uh, malt pipe here that would be installed inside your bruzilla. You'd have the bottom screen, your pipe right here, and before adding the grains, you wanna put on the grain blocker. This just goes and blocks the opening of the pipe so that when you're pouring grains in, they're not just falling down the pipe and into the bottom of your bruzilla. So we'd have that inside the unit, our mash water's in there, pouring the grains, stirring it really, really well. Once that's done, take this off. Take the top plate and you'd put that on there just like that until it was touching your grains. And then once that's done, you put the overflow inlet onto the top of that pipe just like so. So before we're going to start our brew day, 
A couple things you want to just quickly double check. Number one, that your ball valve is in the off position here. You don't want it open and spilling water everywhere. And the second is that the false bottom is installed before you put in the grain basket. So we put that in there. It just rests on the bottom. That'll block little bits of grain, maybe some of our hops from going and blocking the pump. We then add in our mash water. Uh, there is, I don't know if you can see this, but there are volume indicators on the inside of the unit uh, in both liters and gallons. So we'd add our mash water, let's just say five gallons. Away we go. Next, add the malt pipe or grain basket. We would then install the grain blocker. Once we were, the water was at our strike temperature, whatever temperature we want to mash at, we'd start adding in the grains and stirring really well. Once all the grains have been added and stirred, we would remove the grain blocker, put on the top plate, and then put on the overflow inlet. Next, we'd put the lid on. Do not clamp the lid down. It's not meant for that. That's for if you're adding a distilling column to it. So just leave it resting on top. We would then grab the recirculation arm, put the tubing on the inside. Then this is just a cam lock fitting. So insert it and then push both of these down. Close the check valve, start the pump. And then just slowly open this up. You just want it to slowly recirculate the mash water. You don't want it open full bore. I usually have it maybe like a quarter or so, maybe a third open is usually enough. We'd let that mash for an hour and then we'd be ready to sparge. So we just turn off the pump, remove the recirculation arm and be careful. There'll be a little bit of hot wort that might come out of here. So we'd remove that remove the lid, take the grain basket handle and there are two holes on either side of the grain basket here. So just put that in there like so. Then you pull up on this and you'll see there are four feet and on the inside of the unit there are four ridges for those feet to rest on. So if you're pulling up on this and it's not coming out, it's probably because the feet are hitting the ridges. So you just want to turn it until those are clear. There you go. So your mash water will be leaking down into the main unit. At this point, I would start the boil. So I would hit the temperature, set it to boil turn on both elements so that it's heating up the uh, wort as we're sparging. You'd have your sparge water separate that you're pouring on top. Um, some people just use room temperature, whatever sparge water. That's fine. It'll just take longer to get to a boil. I personally just heat it up on a propane burner or I'll just heat it up on my stove and then sparge with that. I usually sparge with um, water that's about 168 Fahrenheit. Um, I don't know off the top of my head in Celsius what that is, so 168 Fahrenheit. You sparge. Once you, you don't hear any more uh, wort um, going from the malt pipe into the unit, you can take it off with the handle, set it aside. And usually at that point, I'm still not out of boil yet, so I'll go and clean that. It's just easier to clean before everything gets kind of uh, dry and stuck. You can rinse off all the grains pretty easily. So that's basically it. You know, once it gets boiling, you just add your hops as per your recipe. Some people use a hop spider or a bag. Some people don't. I think it kind of just, it depends on how many ounces of hops you're adding in there. If you're adding three, four ounces, not a big deal. If you're doing like a New England IPA where you're going to be adding like half a pound to the Whirlpool or something, you might want to add it to a hop spider. Uh, but that's personal preference. I'd say try it without and then if you run into issues and grab one. I personally don't use one. So once the boil is done, uh, I always use the recirculation arm 
to pump out of the brusilla and into my fermenter. And because I'm doing that, I'll actually leave this in here the entire time it's boiling. That way the tubing is getting sanitized. I'll also turn on the pump, you know, for a minute here and there throughout the boil again, just to sanitize it. And then when the boil's done, turn off your elements. So once your boil's done, you're going to want to chill down the wort as quickly as possible. So make sure that you turn your elements off. Plop in your immersion chiller, which should have some tubing on both sides. Again, not included, um, but you'll need that. So what I do to help it chill quicker is I'll have the recirculation pump going. And I'll also take my spoon, which you'll want to make sure is clean and sanitized at that point, And I'll stir at the same time. So with the pump kind of moving the wort around and you stirring it, I find it knocks like a good five minutes or so off the chilling time. Off your elements, put this, uh, the silicon tubing into your fermenter, start the pump, and it'll pump out. I also uh, will tip the unit towards where the pipe is, just to get kind of almost every drop out of the brusilla into my fermenter. Once that's done, you'd want to clean it. So take off the arm. take out the false bottom. In the summertime here, I just bring it outside, take the garden hose, spray it all down. Same thing for the main unit. I'll spray it down, just dump everything onto the grass or whatnot. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, and once that's done, I'll put in about two gallons of water and uh, put the false bottom back. And I'll just let it recirculate for a half an hour, just for the the cleaner to just clean out the pump and whatnot and then dump it put in some rinse water rinse it through everything and that's pretty much it for the malt pipe i mean don't put it away dirty but it doesn't have to be sparkling clean everything that goes in there's going to be boiled afterwards anyway so i typically spray it down just take a towel and just quickly wipe off the the most uh, grains and whatever other matter might be on there and that's pretty much it. That's uh, the gist of how to put it together and use it. It's not too complicated, but I can see if it's your first time. There's no instruction manual in the box, so if you're not going to want to hunt online to try and find the manual, you have this video to reference. Uh, just a quick note, there are a couple items that I would recommend picking up with your Brusilla. Uh, one, one being just a stainless steel spoon or mash paddle. You want it to be stainless steel so that when you're mixing the grains you're doing a good job. Plastic ones they heat up and they start to bend and you don't really get all the dough balls out. So these are cheap. I mean I think we sell these for 10 or 11 Canadian dollars. Before using the unit for the first time you're going to want to clean it out. Uh, there might be machining oils or whatever that you want to get out of there before you use it. Uh, I use powdered brewery wash also known as PBW. Another item that's available that's not necessary but I like is the insulation jacket. Uh, I find it holds a mash temperature a little bit more consistently and also comes up to a boil quicker with this on. So it just wraps around like this and just again keeps it a little bit more insulated. Uh, they're around 30 bucks and I find it's worth it. I also like it because I tend to brew out on my deck in the summer. My son might be around. And although this doesn't get hot enough to seriously injure anybody, if somebody brushes up against it and it has the jacket on, this is basically just warm to the touch. It's not hot at all. So I like it for that reason. Well, that's it. That's an overview of how to put together and use the Brewzilla. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Give us a shout. Hit us up on social media. We're there to help you.